Hey, what's going on guys? Shane here. And I'm the bad man, Bubba Jenkins. Today, Bubba J is gonna show me how to recover after a miscalculated attack to the legs. Let's say you shoot in and you're in a compromised position like a front headlock. We're gonna go over a drill to understand it and recover from it. Let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna go over our front headlocks, um, a little bit of our drilling and a little bit of the concept and the philosophies behind the front headlock. Okay, okay so when you've taken a bad shot or if I have snapped you down into a position where you're in on your knees like here right, or here, it's vitally important that you understand your vulnerabilities. Um, I, knowing and seeing, go down, I'm knowing and seeing I am faster, I can see more, I can do more. I, you, I'm trying to capitalize on the fact that you have now made a mistake. I truly believe if you end up in this position, whether you're on the leg or not, you have made a, a, a slight miscalculation because you wouldn't be here if your calculations were correct. I believe if you were if you were on your feet and someone snapped you into the front headlock and pulled you all the way down, you, you didn't do a good job of fighting that front headlock when it initially jumped on you. Right. Or if you have taken a bad shot, you miscalculated the timing of his sprawl, and now we're here in the front headlock. Right. So truly, I believe a lot of times you rarely get to a front headlock willingly. When you get to a front headlock, we have to understand the vulnerabilities of us being in that position. Okay. So, we're going to do a quick drill for you. You be on your uh, be on your feet. I mean, on your hands and your feet. Now, me knowing that I want to get around you to score, I have to go this way and I have to go this way. But to get us warmed up with the understanding and the philosophy of it, you're going to watch my feet. It isn't like you can see a whole bunch. So more times than not, I'm not going to allow this guy to have more than this peripheral vision. He's not going to obviously be able to hear because I'm going to be up here like this. Okay. Right? So he's only going to be able to see so much, almost only the feet. So as I'm going here, I give my partner that feel and I'm letting him know that I'm coming this way. I'm giving him a good understanding. So instead of stepping that back, all you're going to do is circle. Just circle. Boom. Right? And I'm coming back this way and circle. So after you get a good understanding of it, we're going to play a little game of me trying to, you know, control you. Boom. Right. Right. So this will be the game. And after you get a little bit warmed up, this position isn't the most comfortable to be in. Obviously, it's a little bit of pressure on your hands and you can feel the strain in it. But, boom, but, and you're starting to feel how you can warm up. Boom. And that's a little bit of the game of the front headlock drill understanding the philosophy and the vulnerabilities that we're susceptible to when we're down there on the ground. <laughs> okay. Now, after we've gotten him in the philosophy of understanding his vulnerabilities, I'm obviously, as the attacker, not going to stay out here and let this freedom ride. I want to bring this guy underneath me and control his upper body. That's when the knees start coming down, we start getting broken down to the elbows, and bad things start to happen because of the mistakes that we're making and the vulnerability. We are vulnerable in this position. MMA, there's guillotines and all kinds of different lives. And in wrestling, I'm seconds away or emotion away from giving up two. You know, taking a bad shot or being in this front headlock, I'm seconds and in, in, in motions and movements away from giving up something that is what we would call vital. Okay, so when I start to get close to you as the attacker and I start to get in the front headlock, the first thing you need to do as you're under in the front headlock is control the elbow and circle towards the elbow you're controlling. You wanna to circle to your feet. Height is always gonna win the battle of the scramble. So when we're in here, the first thing that he's going to do as I'm on this side towards the camera, he's going to reach up, grab this elbow here, and as he grabs the elbow, he is going to circle like he was doing on his drill of the tripod away to his feet controlling this arm. It helps him understand the vulnerability. It helps him understand my awareness of where I am. It stops me from being as mobile as I want to be and it gives him some sense of control. Again, I'm here. I control his head. He reaches up, grabs the elbow, circles to his feet, controls the arm. Common, mis common mistakes that happen <laughs> Common mistakes that are made um, in this position are the controlling with both hands here. 
as the guy controls my head, a lot of times we try to both hands on this side. Okay, a lot of times it leaves us susceptible to an underhook or the attacking of a guillotine or a choke on the other side. As we trying to attack on this side, he's making us vulnerable on the opposite side. So as we control the elbow and we circle to our feet, I want to have one hand on the elbow and one hand on the mat, the knee or his hip as I circle to my feet. Here, I'm circling, I'm obviously being more aware of any guillotine, any kind of offense that he may have or look for. We have to know what we are vulnerable for. Obviously in the tripod, I can't just be down here and stand up with my heels and feet towards him. There's too many things as far as the ankle picks, the running underneath here, trapping me. There's just way too many things that I have to be aware of when I'm under here. Like I said, being under here is likely a mistake. Being under here is likely a miscalculation in your attack. So, the circling, boom, 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 boom. Then we did that one. Now controlling the elbow, circling to our feet, boom, 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 circling to our feet. Now, after we get to our feet, coming up. Like I was saying, we're still vulnerable. I cannot have my heels in the mat. I can't just poke my head up. I can't just circle out. So I have to be smart here. When I'm circling, sometimes I can bring that guy's foot to me. Just how I did. My circle, as I step this way, that leg comes. I step this way, that leg comes. If I can time that on my circle up, by pushing away and letting that leg come to me, I can use that as a common attack from the front headlock offensive defensive position in attacking. Let's review it. I'll actually have Shane do it. Now, Shane's going to control the elbow, circle to that side. Boom. As he's coming to his feet, I'm basically a step or two behind him. Circle Morgan, I'm a step or two behind him. I'm trying to control him. I'm probably wanting to pull him back. As I understand that he's basically 80% of the way out, he's done a good job controlling my elbow, circling to the same way that I have the elbow. I'm probably gonna to start to stand and understand that I've lost this position. I'm standing and maybe I'll try to regroup as we stand or maybe I'll try to continue to circle and look for something else. As I'm doing that, my philosophy is the best defense is an offense. So even when I'm on defense, I'm attacking. Controlling the elbow, circling to the feet. As I come up a step behind, what he's going to do on the opposite side, he's going to keep this elbow tight. He's going to keep it nice and tight and thinking about holding it as if like he's trapped me. I don't want to have it free and then attack my leg. He wants to pin it to my chest or even with this as he's going to attack my knee or my ankle, he wants to pin this elbow to either this knee or to this ankle. The elbow that he has collected that I thought was going to work for me in the beginning has now become a captain of my demise. As it circles, boom, he controls it. My heavy foot, as I'm trying to circle away, boom, comes. There's his attack during his defense. There's his offense during his defense. And that is a little bit of our front headlock series. There are tons of ways to score from there and to be susceptible to different offenses and defense. But if we understand just a little bit of the philosophy of where we're vulnerable, where we can see things, simple basics of circling the way the elbow is that is attacking us, we can understand some of the, under, some of the beginning nuances of the headlock series. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So again, like anything else, it takes practice. Find a partner and rep it out. Until next time, I'm Shane, Bubba J. Fight tips for the underdogs.